In this video, I'll talk about why the crypto and Dogecoin crash happen and when we can expect to recover after this. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Doge have crashed this weekend, with more than $120 billion white from the combined crypto market. This happened after U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen issued a stark crypto warning. Basically, the latest Bitcoin and crypto sell-off was sparked by fears the Federal Reserve could put its foot on the gas in its fight to drive down inflation. This is especially after the latest U.S. Consumer Price Index reading showed the economy remains red-hot. After the crash, Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange, suspended Bitcoin withdrawals. The CEO posted, Temporary pause of Bitcoin withdrawals on Binance due to a stuck transaction causing a backlog should be fixed in around 30 minutes. We'll update. Also, after the crash, popular Bitcoin analyst Plan B reminded everyone that the monthly RSI of Bitcoin is at its lowest point ever. Sitting at 43.7, the last time it was close to being this low was back in January 2019 when Bitcoin was trading at $3,400 and the monthly RSI clocked in at 43.9. Before that, the next lowest point was in January 2015 when Bitcoin was trading at 210 and the monthly RSI was at 4 4.6. If you don't know, the relative strength indicator is a momentum indicator that gauges the magnitude of recent price changes to analyze overbought or oversold conditions in an asset. Another factor to consider following the most recent dip in the Bitcoin price is the number of addresses profiting from their Bitcoin positions. Data from analytics provider Into the Block reveals that it prices slightly below 24K, only 46.58% of the addresses that hold Bitcoin are in profit. I just want to remind you that we're talking about Bitcoin first because whatever happens with Bitcoin affects Dogecoin a lot. This is because of the high 30-day price correlation it shares with Dogecoin. Now let's talk about the market sentiment for a minute. Bank of America recently conducted a survey of 1,000 existing and potential users of crypto and digital asset exchanges. It found that 91% of respondents intended to buy crypto in the next six months, which was the same percentage as those who said they had bought in the last six months. Selling expectations are also steady, with 30% saying they do not plan to sell any of their crypto holdings in the next six months, unchanged from the percentage who said they had not sold any crypto in the previous six months, the report said. The bank sees growing interest in the use of crypto as a payment method, it said, with 39% and 34% of respondents using crypto as a payment method to make online or in-person purchases. Also, Watkins, who is a former senior research analyst at Masari, said that crypto public markets offer the greatest investment opportunity across any asset class over the next decade. But at the same time, it is underserved by liquid managers built for the industry's next leg of growth as its leading projects scale from 1 to 100. He went on to add that they aim to be active participants in protocol governance and support the crypto economy's leading infrastructure protocols as they ride up the S-curve to global adoption. Now let's talk about some key levels we need to keep in mind for Bitcoin as we move forward. Also, a lot of analysts are saying that 22,400 marks the start of possible bottom territory, but the downside targets technically extend all the way to 11,000. At around 23,400, the realized price, the average price at which each Bitcoin last moved, is acting as the first solid support so far on lower timeframes. Previous levels, including those highlighted as potential bottoms, have failed to hold and sentiment continues to favor further sell-side pressure. The first port of call for a significant drawdown is the 200-week simple moving average. Economist Alex Kruger said, Realize how little this crypto dump has to do with Celsius and the cent ETH drama and all to do with the widespread panic in risk assets and broken charts. This is just my opinion, I'm often wrong. My guesstimate is Celsius added 1.2x to the fuel. Everybody making it about Celsius. Watch the media tomorrow. But without Friday's CPI numbers and equities collapsing this would not have happened. Another thing we need to keep in mind is that the crash didn't have anything to do with the Luna fiasco. Chainalysis, a blockchain analytics firm, published a report on the crash of the UST. The report noted that while the collapse caused a dent in the cryptocurrency market, it was not the main factor behind the recession.
The report read, the crypto market's recent downturn appears more closely linked to the tech market decline than to USD collapse. The Chainalysis report noted that the correlation between Bitcoin and tech stocks was a relatively new development and that all kinds of investors should their stablecoins during the crash, from big institutional players to retail investors. Also, another survey by one of the big four accounting firms found over 85% of U.S. merchants are prioritizing the enabling of cryptocurrency payments, while around 83% are doing the same for stablecoins. The survey found that 87% of merchants believe accepting crypto payments can provide a competitive edge in the market. Around 93% of U.S. merchants that already accept cryptocurrencies have reported a positive impact on their businesses, from an increase in consumers to improvement in brand perception. While 26% of the retailers said they have already integrated cryptocurrencies, 39% said they plan to do so in the next 12 months. Most retailers expect a significant increase in interest for using digital currencies for payments and 75% aim to enable crypto and stablecoin payments over the next 24 months. Coming back to analysis, Druckenmiller, founder of hedge fund Duquesne Capital also said that, we are six months into a bear market. It's highly probable that the bear market has a ways to run. Inflation has never come down without a recession, and I think a recession is in the cards. Given the extent of the asset bubble and the destruction in the markets, given what's going on in Ukraine, given the zero carbon policy in China, I strongly assume we are going to have a recession sometime in 2023. I don't know whether I'm seeing it, but I expect it to. You can't build over $2 trillion in wealth and purchasing power and then take $1 trillion out and not matter. There certainly seems to be a strong correlation between crypto and the Nasdaq so I'm looking at that as an indicator that way. I will be very surprised if blockchain isn't a real force in our economy say 5 to 10 years from now. I find crypto interesting and I'm monitoring it. If we are going to have an inflationary bull market, I would want to own more Bitcoin than gold, but if it's in a bear phase for other assets, you want to own gold. Now, the interesting thing is that Druckenmiller's comments followed Ray Dalio's comments, who reiterated that cash is trash and equities trashier. He also said he preferred a digital gold like Bitcoin instead. Now coming back to some negative comments after the crash, Janet Yellen, the U.S. Treasury Secretary said, It's not something that I would recommend to most people who are saving for their retirement. To me, it's a very risky investment. And then, Edward Snowden said that he sees more value in cryptocurrencies in their use than as an investment. He said, I use Bitcoin to use it. In 2013, Bitcoin is what I use to pay for the servers pseudonymously. Generally, I don't encourage people to put their money in cryptocurrencies as a technology, and this is what distances me from a lot of people in the community. Also, veteran futures trader Peter Brandt has suggested that the price of ETH could drop to as low as 1200 in the coming month. It's funny because his prediction has already become true. If you don't know, the Ethereum network is now in the final steps of its long-awaited merge with the beacon chain and transition to proof-of-stake. The merge is slated to go live in August if all goes to plan. The switch to POS will massively decrease the energy consumption of the Ethereum network while also improving its security. Now let's move on to some good news from today. So Bitcoin's hash rate, a network security measure based on computing power for mining, has achieved a new all-time high. Hash rate is directly proportional to the computing power of mining equipment for confirming transactions, which deters bad actors from manipulating on-chain transactions. In other words, the Bitcoin ecosystem continues to strengthen its core by consistently recording new all-time highs for hash rate, network difficulty, and network capacity. Also, Cardano remains under strong selling pressure but remains above critical support zones. Basically, it lost a lot less than others. Despite being in the downtrend, Cardano traders and investors withheld the pressure incoming from bears and keep the assets inside of a consolidation range form since the middle of May. The 50-day moving average resistance did not let Cardano to break out from it in an upwards direction, which is why the asset retraced toward the support, which yet manages to hold it from a further plunge. Also, the long-term condition of Cardano on the market does not promise a positive price performance in the upcoming weeks or even months as Cardano still remains in the falling wedges and cannot break through. Now let's come back to Dogecoin. It got hit big time today.
In the 24 hours chart, it's down by almost 20%. As I've been saying, the institutional investors have been playing with Doge and controlling it every single day. Also, this goes to show that the correlation with Bitcoin is still as high as ever. I still think Doge could recover by the end of this week if Ilan comes to the rescue again, and I'm sure he will.